Do you have these questions in your mind? Do you want to know what the future is for the first Ascendant? Are there going to be raids? When is it going to release? What are the new characters that are coming out? Is there going to be a battle pass? Do you have these questions? If you do, guys, then this is the right video for you. Today, we're going to be talking about the future of the first Ascendant, everything we know, everything that's confirmed, and what we can expect of the first Ascendant when it launched. So if you like how that sounds, a like would be greatly appreciated. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel, turn on all your notifications if you want to stay up to date to everything the first Ascendant. Me, myself, and my bros Tron will have you guys completely covered with everything you need to know about the game, not only start at launch, but all the way through. So if you want to make sure you stay up to date to everything, keep it locked here. Now, with that being said, let's dive in and talk about the future of the first descendant. So we're going to break this video into two parts. Number one, we're going to be talking about what's going to happen when the game launches. And the second part we're going to be talking about is what's going to happen after launch so let's get started with the first and most important main question that we have is when is the game launching that's the biggest question so i'm going to give you the official statement and then i'm also going to give you my opinion based on what a dev said and when i personally think that the game is going to launch so the official answer of when the game will release they said it's going to release before february 2024 this gives us a couple months away from the current beta that we're playing but that gives us a very wide radius of this particular release date. Now, one of the developers said that they were going to see what type of feedback they got from the closed beta. And based on that closed feedback, they were going to decide when the release of the game is. Seeing how the numbers spiked up really high in Steam and seeing the amount of people that played the game and how much they enjoyed it, I think it's going to be a foolish attempt to release this next year. I think if they are a very smart company, which they are, I believe this game gets released before December or in December. So make sure you guys start getting ready because I don't think this is going to go on to next year. Now, you guys can quote me on that if it does happen or if it doesn't happen. But I personally think this game launches this year. So keep that in mind. Now, on top of that, guys, is the question is when the game releases, what's going to come with the game? And one of the things we do know that's coming with the game is a battle pass. And for those of you guys who have been playing any loot and shooter or have played any game now, you guys know battle battle passes are a thing of the thing. There's the thing that happens when you launch games. Now, I personally believe there's going to be two versions of the battle pass, just like there's any other game. There's going to be a paid version, and then there's going to be a free version where you're going to be able to obtain loot and get stuff that you need, like materials, skins, maybe like a tier 100 skin that you get once you complete the complete battle pass. So do expect the battle pass to be available. And I'm thinking the entry point for the paid version of the battle pass is going to be kind of the entry point we have for every single battle pass, which is 10 bucks. So if you're going to be playing the game, make sure you save those 10 bucks. In addition to that, just like any other battle pass, if you spend the $10 and you don't buy any cosmetics, you don't buy nothing, I'm pretty sure to get the battle pass again for the next season, you'll be able to pay another 10 bucks and, or just use your credits towards that battle pass. So that's what we know that's launching with the game. In addition to that, we know how many descendants are launching and how many ultimate descendants are launching. So what we do know currently right now, we got a big chunk of descendants that we were able to play with uh, this beta. But when the game gets released, we're going to have a total of 15 descendants. So there's going to be 15 brand new descendants prior from the ones we have. So counting the ones we have, I should say. So there's going to be 15 in total. And the ones you that are available in the beta, those are also going to be included. So 15 in total descendants. Now, on top of those 15 descendants, there's going to be a total of five ultimate descendants. Currently right now, we have two ultimate descendants, which was Visa and Lepec, but there are going to be three more additional that are going to be added, making it a total of five ultimate descendants. So in total, 20 descendants that are going to be available at launch. And we could expect descendants to be added in the future, which we'll talk about that in the second segment. Now, going into the second segment, and this is what's going to be coming after launch so after the game launches this is where things get really excited because there's going to be seasons and within these seasons we could expect the following number one we could expect a dungeon so if you played any sort of destiny game or you played any mmo you know dungeons are a very integral part because not only do we get an update of different bosses within these dungeons but we get really cool awesome mechanics to do but the main thing and the main concept of the dungeon it's for the dungeon to be farmable and for you to obtain some amazing loot that you cannot obtain anywhere else in the world within the game. So these make the missions and the dungeons very enjoyable due to the fact that you could either help your friends complete the dungeons, you could do the dungeons and farm the materials. So I'm excited that not only are we going to have the storyline, we're going to have the void bosses, 
But on top of that, we're going to get dungeons as well. Now, in addition to the dungeons, we are also getting a raid. Yes, guys, I've been asking since I heard about this game and since I got a chance to be invited to participate in giving a couple of my suggestions to the game. I am finally glad we're actually have full confirmation that after the game gets released, we are going to be getting a pretty large scale raid type dungeon that is going to be available for the game. I don't know if it's going to be four player co-op, which I'm thinking it will be, or it could be a three player co-op or maybe even bigger. Maybe it becomes something like Destiny where you could play with six people. That would be crazy. And if it's anything like Destiny where you're able to go into the raid, you, you know, it's going to be like a world's first type of event. If there is, if there's secrets to be found within the raid and you want need to explore every nick and cranny from the map to find out the secret chests and how to open them, I think that would be phenomenal. Now, if these raids and dungeons have specific gear tied to them, so only gear that you're able to obtain, like let's say you want to pick up a helmet, this is the only place you can get a helmet from, another place you can get a suit, another place where you can only get an ultimate weapon, I am extremely, extremely excited that these two different type of modes are announced and are going to become part of the game after the launch so that's what we can expect after the launch so the future of the first ascendant is starting to look very promising now i know one thing that could pretty much end this future and i know you guys have this question in the back of your mind laser what about the microtransactions what's going to happen with those am i going to need to spend a lot of money should i personally avoid this game due to the microtransactions what we currently know about the microtransactions is only what the developers have told us. Now, don't take my word for 100% because I'm not the developer. I can just tell you what they said. They basically said that they're going to limit the amount of microtransactions available in the game. And we're going to allow for you guys to purchase and get the items you needed to get the game enjoyable via the end game content. Now, apart from that, I'm pretty sure the game is going to have cosmetics and items that you will be able to purchase with microtransactions. Of course, we know skins would be are going to be a very popular thing in the game. Maybe they're going to sell some emotes. Maybe they'll sell some skins for the, uh, you know, pretty much the ultimate weapons. The only thing that has me just a little bit concerned is I believe they are going to sell currency that's going to allow you to reduce the time of materials to be crafted. Of course, it's, uh, you know, it's common sense that this would be very monetary for them. Now, the thing is, currently right now, it's a 12-hour counter for your character to be built. You theoretically have to wait half a day if you want to play on that character. Now, I think if this gets reduced to six hours, I think that would be legit. But, you know, I do see the incentive of them to monetize this. Now, this is where the only problem that I might have with the game is that it just takes too long to do certain stuff. If you want to progress in the game, it just makes the waiting too long. And this is where the microtransaction might come in play. Well, if you want to shorten that time, you're going to need to spend a little bit of currency in order to reduce that time and be able to, you know, enjoy your character or enjoy your weapon as quickly as you possibly can. So that's the only thing like I'm kind of iffy about, but we're going to have to wait till the game gets released. But the future looks really bright for the first Ascendant. I think a lot of people enjoyed it. I think a lot of people were able to play the game and fell in love with it. And the game became very addictive. I don't know if you guys are as addicted as I am, but I am really enjoying the game and hope you guys are enjoying it. Who was your favorite Descendant after the beta? Let me know in the comment section down below. And what do you think about the future of the first Descendant? Do you think this might be the final Destiny killer that everybody's been waiting and praying for? Or do you think we just need to wait for the release? Let me know all that information in the comment section down below. But don't forget, if you want to stay up to date to everything the first Descendant, keep it locked on this channel, and I'll catch you guys on the next video.